So to remove the front shocks, first you're going to want to remove your chassis brace here. The front chassis brace is held on by four screws. So if you turn this over, <clears throat> you look on the bottom here. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So right here, there's one of the bolts that holds on the front chassis brace. And the other one is right here. Now it's exactly the same on the other side, guys. You've got one here and one right there. It's kind of hard to see, it's underneath my servo horn right now. But if you go ahead and remove those first, that'll take off your chassis brace. Okay, now you notice your front body brace won't come undone yet after taking those four bolts out. You've still got two more. There's one here and one here which holds down the front brace and the end cap on the suspension. Now you're also gonna to wanna to remove one more. There's one right here on each side that you go ahead and remove. This disconnects your rocker from the end of the shock on this side. Now, if you take those eight bolts out, your front brace will come off and then your shocks will come out. Now, if you're having a hard time getting your, your end caps out of the rocker here or out of the frame here, you can go ahead and loosen these up. You can loosen up this one as well as this one here and it'll make it a little bit easier to get these in and out. So for the rear of the car, guys, if you've got the upgraded rear frame brace like I do here, you've just got the one bolt in the center here and the two up front that actually hold the shocks down to the main part of the frame. So go ahead and take this off and take those out and you can rip them out. And once again, if you have a hard time getting these out of the rockers, you can, this one will be removed, but you can loosen up this one and this one and it'll split the rocker in half and then it'll make it easier for these to come in and out. You don't need to fight it, it's not necessary. Now if you have the stock brace in the rear that your car came with, you're gonna to need to go ahead and remove, let me see, on this one you've got one, two, three, four, five bolts you'll need to go ahead and remove. And obviously these are the two here that hold the shock down to the frame. The other part is held down by the rocker. So go ahead and remove that. Now guys, just before you rip your shocks out, you're going to want to make sure that you know exactly where they go, which position they came out of. You're going to want to separate your front and your rear so you're not mixing them up. I even go as far as to separate and keep and maintain my left and my right. Your suspension, as far as all the other parts go as well, it has a certain spot it likes to be. It's been there for a long time. I would recommend putting it back in the same spot. You'll have less problems and less issues. Now, as we go ahead and rip these shocks apart, I'm also going to keep the parts separated so that all the parts go back in the same shock the same way and they get replaced in the same position. This is pretty important if you want no issues. <laughs> so now that you've got your shocks laid out and separated and you know where they go, our next step is to go ahead and remove the spring from our shock dampener. Now this is pretty easy to do. One of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do is take this adjusting nut right here and you're gonna to wanna to hold the body and turn the adjusting nut all the way up to its loosest position. What this is gonna do is make it a lot easier to get our spring out with zero damage. So take your nut all the way to the top like that. Once you've done that, you'll notice your spring's got some play in it. So turn it upside down you're going to compress the spring. You don't need a special tool for this. It's not, that's why we down this in the nut, lock nut to make it easier. But once you do that, then you can go ahead and push down on this retaining clip that holds your spring in, and then just go ahead and slide it out of the way. Just like that. So what you're going to be left with is your shock, your spring is removed, and our next step is going to be to turn it over. We're going to take this end cap off here and drain all the oil out. Guys, you can drain your oil out into anything that you want to. Some people use uh, caps or old 
uh, pop cans or something like that so you can just throw it away. I use this little tin little dog dish thing. I just, it works great for me. And you can use anything you want to. I would not recommend just taking the cap off and dumping all of your oil directly into a trash can. Uh, let me tell you a real quick story about that. I used to work at a Kawasaki dealership where I was a mechanic. We hired a new mechanic and for the day we had him change out the fork coil on somebody's dirt bike. Well, not knowing, and he was a new guy, what he did was he took the entire fork to the back of the property where we had the 55 gallon drums of oil, the, the used oil, and he took the cap off and dumped the oil out into that 55 gallon drum. And when he did this, all of the parts on the inside, because he had already loosened up all the valving, it just dumped right out into that 55 gallon drum that's only got the hole where you fill it, you know, it's like a two and a half, maybe three inch hole. So he spent the rest of the day with a magnet trying to fish all the parts out of the bottom of that 55 gallon drum. Now, in relationship to that, I'm telling you not to dump it directly into your trash can because if you turn it upside down, and not to say that any parts are gonna fall out of this, this is a pretty small unit, everything's real contained, but if you have a broken piece in there or something, you turn it upside down and it falls out in the trash can. Well, now you gotta dig everything out of the trash can to get to the bottom to find out what fell out and how it went. So I would just recommend using something where you can see all the contents that's coming out of your shock and you can look at it in a pan. You can see the color of your oil, you can see if any parts are in there. Um, don't do what my friend did. <laughs> so once you've found your suitable container, you can go ahead and grab your shock. And you're gonna go on the top here where this end cap is. I like to take an Allen that fits in the hole, go ahead and stick it in the hole where it was mounted before, and grab it firmly and go ahead and crack that free, maybe one spin. After that, you can pretty much do it by hand. Just go ahead and take your cap off here. Underneath, you're gonna see a bladder on the inside, and wow, it looks like it's, uh, it's pretty dirty, guys. It looks like it's, Looks like it's really gray to me. See how, see how dirty my finger is there? So we're gonna go ahead and turn this upside down and we're gonna go ahead and just go up and down with the rod here, back and forth a couple times to make sure we get this out. Um, if, if you're gonna go ahead and just refill the shock with new oil and it's the same weight that you had, you don't really need to go any further than this, guys. You can go ahead and as long as it's clean, I would recommend just go ahead and dump some of the fluid, your shock oil in there, and maybe dump it out a couple times just to clean all the components. Now this is only if you're going back in with the same exact weight of fluid. If you're gonna change the weight of your fluid, then I would recommend taking this all apart, cleaning all the parts internally, so that everything is clean. We've got all the contaminants out of here from our previous oil and we're putting a new oil in here clean and it's a new weight and we don't want to confuse the two or uh, have any corruption going on because of the two different weights. We want it to be what we want it to be. That's why we're changing the weight of the oil. So now that you've dumped all the shock oil out of your body, gotten most of it out of there, you don't have to get it all out because we're taking it apart anyway. We're gonna clean it all up. You can go ahead and we can remove this rod end here and the bump stop. And to do that, what you're gonna need is a pair of rod pliers like this. Now, if you don't have these, you can do it with something else. In the past, I have used many times, I've taken just a pair of regular needle nose pliers and put a rag in the center of the jaws. That way, when you clamp down on your rod, you're not doing any damage. And this, this works fine, guys. You just gotta squeeze a little bit tighter because it kind of turns inside the rag. But uh, <clears throat> believe it or not, um, Traxxas, if you read in their manual, they want you to use a pair of dikes to hold your rod so it doesn't move. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm not ever gonna pair a pair of dikes on my rod. It's, it, the, the sharp jaws, they're gonna cut you. It's not a good idea for anything. I guess they feel that you're gonna get the maximum amount of grip with a pair of dikes because you don't have the correct tool like this or a pair of needle nose and a rack. <laughs> so go ahead and you can stick your Allen through the hole here and use your rod pliers and go ahead and take the end caps off. Now before you take your bump stop all the way off your rod, <clears throat> I want you to 
realize the direction that it's going. Hopefully yours is in the correct direction. Now a lot of people would probably tell you it doesn't matter, but the bump stop here, the larger section goes towards the end cap that we just removed. The smaller section goes up towards the shock body. When we put this back together, I'll explain to you why this is important, even though most people don't think it is. So we've got our end cap off here and we recognize which direction the bump stop is going. We're going to go ahead and slide that off gently. Now, we're going to unscrew the lower portion of this body here. It shouldn't, it should be snug, but it shouldn't be too tight, guys. So go ahead and take that off. It's just a plastic cap. Pull that off. Now what we're going to do is we're going to push our rod from the bottom up through the top. That's going to show us our piston and the rod. Okay, so once you've pushed your rod up through the top of the body and exposed your piston and rod here, there's only one more thing inside this body that needs to come out. Very gently with a pick, you can grab this little blue seal right here and don't lose it. There is one in the rebuild kit, by the way, in case you do, if you bought the rebuild kit, there's another one. I don't know if you're just taking this apart to clean everything very gently and put it back together or not. But uh, that's the last out of the housing. So our body is free. Obviously you still have your adjuster nut on here. You do not need to remove this unless you're having trouble getting the dirt underneath clean or you wanted to, I don't know, maybe try to dye them or anodize them or something like that. Other than that though, that's pretty much it. Now here is the rod with the piston on it. If you're going to be removing your piston and changing it out with another one, all you need to do is take this nut right here off. And I believe there's a little washer underneath that as well. I'm not sure, but pay attention. You pull that nut off and the washer, and then this piston will come off from this direction. Um, and there is a number on here marked, and it took me a while to look at this and see. I wanted to double check. I have not changed these yet. They're the stock. And it does have a number two marked here on the outside that you can see, but it is really hard to see, guys. You need a magnifying glass or some good glasses or, or something and a lot of light. So anyway, that's how you change out your piston. You just pull that nut off, and I think there's a washer underneath. Pull the piston off, put the piston back on in the same relationship that you took it off, which means don't flip the piston over. Put it back on the same way that it came off with the new one. If the number's on this side so you can see it, put it back so the number's back on that side. That's where it's supposed to be, by the way, in case you guys have flipped it over the other direction. I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but I would keep it going the same direction. Now, with all that being said, and our parts out here, I'm gonna go ahead and clean all these up really good, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so got everything back here, all nice and cleaned up. Got it laid out the way I want it to be. Um, and I just used a rag and a uh, toothbrush for some of the harder to get areas and then i also went ahead and used wd-40 on the plastic and that's just to make the plastic shine to get the dirt out of some of the places i couldn't get it but that's pretty much what you're looking for you want it to be just super clean as a whistle inside there no contaminants whatsoever and we'll start rebuilding this now i want you guys to notice something here i don't know if you have noticed this or not but Right here I have a bump stop on the front and on the rear. And right here on the rear, I have a bump stop inside the shock. I do not have one on the front. Now so one of my older videos that I did was called My Solution to the Rod-In Problem. And it's based on everybody ripping the rod ends off of their push rods and stuff like that. Uh, and also the end caps or the rod ends on the shocks here. People are ripping those off and I ripped several off in one day and I was fed up with it. So I tried a couple different things, it didn't work out, but I ended up putting a bump stop here in this location where I'm going to show you and that took care of my problem. So if you're interested or you have problems with your end caps coming off, I'm going to show you right now what I did to fix it, but there's a great video. I'm sure you're going to learn something from it if you watch the whole video. Again, it's called My Solution to the Rod End Problem. So my solution to the rod end problem ended up ending out with me putting another bump stop, oops, sorry about that, with me putting another bump stop here on the shaft up against the bottom of the piston. That way, when the shaft's going up and down and it bottoms out on the inside of the body, it's not going down as far. 
so it's not giving it that little bit of extra play, that travel on the rods where they're popping the ends off. This was my solution to the problem. If you're interested, watch the video. There's a lot of great stuff on there. Anyway, so now that we got all this stuff clean, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to inspect everything here. We're going to inspect the rod for straightness and make sure it's not marred up in any way. There's any nicks taken out of it. We're going to go through and make sure that our nut is tight. And by the way, I did look at the instructions in the rebuild kit. I'm going to show that to you here right now. But there is a washer in here, like I told you, but it's not where I told you. It's actually underneath the piston. So you have your rod, and then you put the washer, and then you put the piston, and then this lock nut here goes on top of it. So that's how that goes. I'm going to show it to you in the instructions with the rebuild kit right now. Anyway, we're going to show you what the rebuild kit comes with. But go ahead and check every single thing out. Um, make sure that your body here is not cracked in any way. Your threads are still good. There's no damage. It's not bent. Um, and then one thing I did not tell you guys to take apart and clean, but I did and I think you should too. Pull this bladder out of the inside of the cap very gently. Don't put a hole in it or anything because this is actually what seals uh, your oil inside the body from coming out this little hole right here. If you got oil coming out of this little hole right here, you're guaranteed that this bladder has a hole in it or it's crooked in there. Anyway, that's how you know. So take that apart and clean that out too, guys. Inspect your bladder, inspect the housings. Um, you know, you can check your springs. You might want to be changing them. I'm not sure what you're doing. I'm running purple all the way around. I'm going to continue to run purple all the way around. Uh, check the lower half of your body here, the cap that holds the seal in. I would definitely check out the seals, especially if you don't have a rebuild kit. And uh, just kind of go over everything and make sure it's good. Now, if something is bad, let's see what we got. I've got two different rebuild kits, and we're going to see what's in both of them so you guys know what's going on. Okay. So we've got two different rebuild kits here. They both have different things in them. This one is part number 5462. Cost me five bucks at my local hobby shop. This one here is part number 5465. And this one cost me five bucks at the hobby shop as well. So let's open up this one right here and see what's in it. All right, so I got the top off here. Let's see what this kit's got in it. All these little blue seals like to stay in there and the instructions so right here I can see that we've got these are the pistons okay there should be six of them because there's three different sizes and this kit will do two different shocks so there you go there's our six pistons right here three different sizes we've got the uh, the rod ends here looks like they're giving you four of them I'm not sure why I guess in case you go through them like people have been doing um, and then they give you all of the the uh, the swivels that go inside of them. So you've got uh, let me see you got four of those. And I guess actually these right here you could also use. I'm pretty sure they're universal on the cap that goes on top of your shock. If these are worn out, these right here are universal for that or for the rod ends. I'm sure. So. Um, then you got your bladders. If you poke a hole in your bladder, if it's just no good, you got a bladder in there. There's there's two of them, one for each shock. Here are your bump stops. So you might want to use these inside of your rear shocks if you're having a problem with your rod ends and your bump stops are still good. Then we've got some brand new seals here. There's the two seals. I would replace those for sure if you have any doubt about your seals being worn in any way. This is such a cheap kit, guys. If anything is worn out, just replace it. It's going to save you time and money down the road. Now here is your washer and your nut. I don't see the other washer. Probably... Huh. They only sent me one washer or it's under, stuck underneath something here. But here's the washer that goes underneath the piston. And then the piston goes on top. And then here is your nut, and that nut goes on top like that. So there, that there's that kit. And by the way, it also comes with instructions here. And just so we're on the same page here, there you go. There's that nut right there. Well, here's your bladder. There's that nut. There's the piston. There's that little washer. And there's the rod that goes into the body. So it's showing it exactly like I'm saying on here. That's how it goes. That is that kit. Let's open up the other one. 
So we're in our other kit here, the uh, 5465. This gives us two of the adjusting nuts and two of the uh, spring, the retainers that hold the springs onto the shaft. Um, and it looks like we got the all the lower half of the body that were screws on to hold the seal in. And then they also give you two more of these here, these swivels. So that kit has some of that stuff in it if you need it. I guess the only thing I don't see here, obviously, are the rods in. The rods are a special kit, and you can get different rods. Um, and the uh, caps that go on top. Um, I know you can get aluminum caps and other stuff like that, a little bit beefier maybe. So that's pretty much those two kits and what they come with. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to continue checking out the rest of all of my stuff here and anything that I think that needs it, some seals or maybe the pistons or whatever, anything that needs to be replaced is going to be made brand new. I'm going to do that right now and then we'll start putting it back together. So after a close look and inspection on everything, I've decided the only thing I'm going to replace is going to be these seals here. Now, my other seals don't really look bad. They might have a little bit of wear on them, but I'm just not sure. And for as cheap as this kit is, we're just going to replace the seals. So you're going to do that by taking, make sure you take these out of the way so you don't uh, replace them with the same old seal. But you got your seal, and it doesn't matter which direction it goes, I believe. Let me double check here. It looks like they're the same on both sides. So you're just going to go ahead and drop your seal down inside the body, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and do that on all of them. Okay guys, once you've got your little blue seal on the bottom of the body housing, our next step is to go ahead and grab your shock oil. I'm going to be trying the, uh, the team for the factory team shock oil this time. I'm going to be running 70 weight. Uh, last season I was using the Team Losi and I ran, I ended up running 68 weight in the end. It was okay, but uh, I really like to jump, the, the bigger jumps and stuff like that. I noticed it just didn't last more than five minutes. I'd bring the car in and it seemed like, like the suspension was drooping down a little bit. I just didn't have uh, enough viscosity in the oil to keep up what I needed to keep the car, the car stout. So we're gonna go ahead and try this 70 and we're gonna see what happens if it doesn't work. I might try 80, 90, 100. Like I said, it's a Rubik's Cube. It's what you need to accomplish what you're trying to do at the exact time and place that you're at. So that's what it's all about. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of the shock oil and I'm gonna put some on my finger and then I'm gonna go ahead and run it over my shaft here so that I can lubricate the shaft or the rod. I can lubricate the rod here. This is important so that when you stick your rod into, well, this doesn't sound good. When you stick the rod into your body housing here and it goes down through the bottom, your rod is lubricated and it's not going to rip the dry seal or destroy it in any way. This is important guys. Make sure your rod's lubed before you put it into the dry seal. Let's go ahead and do that now. So we got our rod here and like I said, I'm going to put a little bit of lubrication on my finger. It doesn't take very much, just a little bit. And what you're going to do is just go ahead and lubricate this rod thoroughly. Now I still got enough on my finger to probably do all of these. So we're just going to go ahead and lube all of these up. Actually, I might need just a little bit more here. Make sure we got all of our, our rods lubed up. And once you get done with that, we're going to go ahead and stick our rod in the body housing. Now, some people will tell you that you should put this cap here on for the lower body housing, you should put this on to keep the seal in there before you push the rod through. Um, I've found that it can cock this sideways so that it does damage to it. So what I'd like to do with your lubricated rod, remember, go ahead, and this is on the front part, the front shocks, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stick our shaft in here with the piston assembly. See how it pushed that seal out? So when you come all the way down, you're just going to want to very gently go ahead and put your seal back where it goes. So once you got the seal in there where it goes and it looks like it's in a good spot and it's not cocked, now you can go ahead and you can take this cap here for the lower part of the housing and go ahead and screw that on. Make sure you get it on there nice and straight and after you're done, 
go ahead and make sure that this moves freely. There's no obstructions, no problems. Um, you want to make sure you're bottoming out all the way. And uh, that's it for that. So we'll go ahead and do this to the other body housing. And then on the rear, I'm going to go ahead and use the other bump stop so that I don't have my rod ends coming off. So then I'll go ahead and show you that. Okay guys, so for the rear, we're going to go ahead and do it the same way, except we're going to put one little step in here. We've got our rod with the piston on it and the nut and our washer down there on the bottom. Now we're going to take this bump stop here and we're going to put it in this direction so that the cone side goes to the piston. That way, and this is what I was telling you with the other bump stops, they work the same way. As you compress this bump stop here against the piston, the piston is a much wider surface area for this to bottom out on and spread out if it needs to. And it's soft enough. If you have a hard enough landing, this will, well actually it's going to work the other way. This will expand. It's just soft rubber. And the oil seems to make it a little bit softer, but it sure does help out for the rod ends, guys. So that's the only thing I'm doing is that. And then we're going to go ahead and stick that through there. Like so. And go ahead and push it through and your seal might come off again like the other one. And when you push the seal back down in here, if you're having problems with it, push the rod in a little bit too. It seems to suck the seal back down and makes it a little bit easier. And then go ahead and push your cap on the end of the housing body here. And this doesn't really need to be tight, guys. Just, just snug. You don't have to kill it. Just do it finger tight, okay? Don't use no tools on it. It's just there to hold the seal and there's no pressure on it at all. And then go ahead and make sure that the rod works really good. You can tell that this rod here does not go down as far as the front does. See the difference? That's because that bump stop is in. There's not very much difference at all. I mean, it's, it's almost nothing. It's just a little bit. And like I said, it will compress if it needs to to get the rest of it out of there. So once you've done that and you've got the ends tight here, go ahead and wipe that shock fluid back off the shaft. You don't need it on there. Dirt's just going to stick to it. So go ahead and clean that. Make sure all these are tight, finger tight. Make sure everything works. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put it back together, guys. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and fill up our bodies here with shock fluid. So go ahead and take your shock fluid and pour it in until it's pretty much the top. I leave just a little bit of space. So you can work it without making a huge mess. Uh, let me put some more in here. It takes a little while to come out, but yeah, just get some in there for the initial part. And then you're going to go ahead and go up and down with your piston here and your rod and go really slow so that you're not making a mess. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to get all the air bubbles. Do you see them air bubbles that came out of there? Can you see, see the air bubbles on top? I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a whole bunch of them. There's a big one. So you're going to want to work this a couple times. And after you get done working it a little bit, you can go ahead and put some more shock oil in there. Go ahead and top it back off. Almost to the top, but leave room to work again so you're not making a big mess. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that again. You know, bring your piston almost all the way to the top, all the way back down to the bottom. And you can still see there's a lot of bubbles in there. So just keep doing that. I'd say do it for, oh, probably a good minute or so to get everything out of there. Now, after you've done that for a minute or so, you can put a little bit more in there. Still, don't make it overflow. You're not trying to put it up to the very top. And work it just a little bit more. Once you feel that you've worked this enough for a minute or two, and you feel that you've gotten most of the air bubbles out of the bottom between the seal and the housing, then you can go ahead and extend, extend the rod all the way down as far as it'll go. And what I like to use, guys, I just use my springs. Go ahead and set the shock body back in the spring. Don't knock it over. We're going to let that sit there for about 15 minutes until all these air bubbles are out of here and you'll be able to look down in there and it's just crystal clear. If you want to, you can work it a little bit more, but after you get done working it, 
just go ahead and let it sit like this for about 15 minutes. All the air bubbles will come out. When that happens, I'm gonna come back on, I'm gonna show you what's going on. So go ahead and do this with all these and I'll see you in 15 minutes. All right guys, so it's been a little while and let's see here. It looks like it is crystal clear. I don't know if you guys can see that. I can see all the way to the bottom of this shock. I mean, it is like looking into a very crystal clear lake. So that's what you want. You want all the bubbles gone. I noticed mine went away before the 15 minute mark, but I just let them sit there to make sure that they were all out. Now what you're gonna do next, let me go ahead and set this down here. I won't spill it. What you're gonna do next is you're gonna take the cap here and you're gonna go ahead and put your bladder inside there. Just go ahead and push the bladder down. Go all the way around and make sure it's in there seated nice so nothing's cocked up or sideways. It should look like that. Once you've got that done, pull your cap back out. And Now, Traxxas tells you guys to fill this up to the very top and then go ahead and screw the bladder on and any excess oil that comes out is going to come out that little hole right there and then you wipe it up and you're good to go. Well, I've got a little problem with that because I just cleaned my bladder and this the top of my cap it's all nice and clean I don't really want oil up in there so they tell you to fill it up to the top and that's what I'm doing guys but I'm not filling it up to the very very top just put what you need in there so that it's probably I don't know and it's hard for you guys to see that almost impossible I'd say there's like a 64th of an inch from the top not very much just like a little bit and then go ahead and gently screw your cap back on and make sure you're not cross-threading it, the threads around there correct and this should just be hand tight guys, there's no reason to over tighten this whatsoever it should just be hand tight like so and that's it and you can see I've got no oil coming out of my little little cap there we're good to go, I didn't make a mess this is a really good time to check it out and make sure you're not leaking from something nowhere. Make sure you're not pushing fluid out of the end here where the seal is. Maybe your seal got cocked or something. Check that to make sure there's no leaks. And check up here around the top of the cap to make sure there's no leaks. Check your little hole, make sure there's nothing coming out. When all that's done and you can go back and forth, there's no leaks, guys. You are ready to go. So we're going to do that to all these right now. And I'll be right back. All right, guys. So now that you've filled your shock body with oil and you've got the top and the bottom caps on hand tight and you've worked your piston through the rod back and forth a couple times, there's no leaks anywhere, now you're ready to install your spring. So here is the spring. Now there's different colors on them. I'm not going to explain this now. If you did not watch part one, then go back and watch part one if you're concerned about which spring you should be putting on for what you're doing. I explained it greatly in there the different thicknesses of the coils and what the different colors mean and the spring rates. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use purple all the way around. I've been running this for a while. I like it. It works really good for me. So let's go ahead and put the spring on here. But first we're going to put the rod end on and the bump stop. Let me show you. So what we're going to do here first is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our bump stop. And remember I told you this is important. Go ahead and put the cone side up towards the bottom of your shock housing and the flat side on the bottom here. Now after you do that, you're going to go ahead and put your rod end back on here and screw it on by hand here as far as you can go. And then you're going to need to use your remedy for whatever pliers you have for the shock rod and go ahead and just tighten that up. I only tighten mine up by hand. It's not necessary to go any tighter than that, but make sure you go all the way down until it stops. You'll feel it, you'll feel it stop. You can't go no more. That's it. So now you've got that on there. Um, you got your rod end on there. You got the bump stop in the correct direction. Let's go ahead and put the spring on. I like to put the colors on the spring indicating the rate towards the body of the housing. It's just easier for me. Once you have done that, go ahead and compress your spring. And we're gonna put this clip on. Just as easy as that, the clip goes on and push the clip up into the end rod, the rod end there. Now you can go ahead and do your adjustment here for your preload. Now we're not gonna preload it right now, we're just trying to get just a little bit of tension on the spring and make sure as you're turning this, you're not backing off the threads on your cap and you're gonna leak oil. So I just go down a little bit just until it's compressing the spring 
and then we do our preload when it's installed on the vehicle. So there you go. You've got a nice shock here ready to go. The dampening works really good. Got good compression. It's clean. Let's go ahead and do them all. So that's it guys. Once you've got your springs back on, the clip in, the rod on, you have your bump stop going in the correct direction. Go ahead and give them a squeeze and make sure you can compress your spring nicely. It goes in easily, no problems, and make sure it rebounds back out on its own without any force. That's it guys. You can go ahead and put these back together. Your adjusting nut here for your preload. Uh, you're going to want to do that when these are mounted up in the vehicle and you've got your battery packs in and all your weight on there so you can adjust your preload uh, while you have the weight on there that's necessary to do it. And just so you know, it might be a little bit easier if you leave the, uh, the front chassis brace off. It's a lot easier to get to your nut than with it on. The back one, if you're using the, the upgraded version, you can go ahead and you've got plenty of room to adjust your nut. But just make sure all the adjust, nuts are adjusted the same and you've got the proper preload and sag that you need. And that's it, guys. So once again, thanks for watching. I'm sorry it was such a long video. I just want you guys to know everything that I know. That's why I made it two parts, so you can watch this at your leisure whenever you want to. Um, that's it, guys. It's ready to go. I hope you guys go out there and have a good time. This works for you. Send me some pictures, send me some videos. You guys got any questions or comments, uh, please let me know. I may not get back to you right away, but I promise I will eventually. And uh, that's it. Have some fun, guys. I'll see you later. Uh, we'll do another video here soon. Until then, peace out.